Hello and welcome to the February uh, TCL Teen Bake Along. Um, if you're able to join us for the January where we made homemade bread, uh, welcome back and I hope you enjoyed your bread. Um, if this is your first time, uh, welcome. Uh, today we're making something much less time consuming than bread. <laughs> uh, probably a bit more basic than bread. Uh, we're going to be making a vanilla wacky cake uh, and it's called wacky because it has uh, no dairy, no eggs, um, which is wacky. Sorry. <laughs> hey. Anyway, we're glad to have you and let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do, and I'm doing it off screen, is preheat our oven. Uh, we're preheating it to 350 degrees. Uh, and this prep will take very little time, uh, so you really want to, you really want to uh, get that preheat going first. Uh, this will take much less time than bread did. Um, the next thing is uh, greasing or lining your pan. Now you can either grease it by putting like just scraping a, like a stick of butter around the side. You can spray it with cooking spray. Um, but what I'm going to do, um, mostly for a little extra learning experience for you, is I'm going to line it with parchment paper. So, here, it's going to be loud, sorry. There we go. Now if you're going to do like a lot of baking, if you already like baking or if you want to get into baking, I recommend getting parchment paper. Or if you can afford to get it, um, a silicone baking sheet, um, which is really good for making so things don't stick to your pans while also not messing with the texture on the outside. Uh, greasing a pan can kind of make it um, make the outside of your cake or whatever it is you're baking in a little bit crispier, like crustier, which is fine, but you know, if you were on the Great British Bake Off, say, they might get on you for that. Um, but for parchment paper, what I'm gonna do is just take a little pencil, just to make sure it's the right size for a weird pan like this. Go around the sides. There we go. And the grid lines are nice, but since this pan doesn't fit nicely into all the grid lines. There we go. And then I've also got kitchen shears. You can tell we're in a, a different kitchen now. This is my home kitchen. Um, and baking is what I do. So I've got a lot of baking supplies. Uh, and then just cut all the way down and just stay on those pencil lines. I didn't make a whole square and you'll see why in a little bit. I get it. Hey, oh, nope. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Now that we've done that, what I might. Oh, no, we got it. And then you just press it down in, and you have some hanging over the sides. And the reason you have it hanging over the sides is because it's easier to get the cake out that way. And again, you can just spray it, and then once it's cooled a bit, like, knock it out of the pan. But if you want to be super fancy, <laughs> you can have your parchment paper hanging out a little bit like this. All right, set that off to the side, and now we actually mix all of our stuff together. Okay, starting with our dry ingredients. Uh, yours are all just going to come in a bag like this. All of the dry ingredients are in there. You don't need to worry about it. Open that on up and dump it in a bowl. Okay, and you can see it's kind of clumped a little bit. Mine's been sitting. Uh, if you did last month's bake along, then you have a nifty tiny whisk. Uh, if not, you can just use a fork. We're gonna just mix that all together nicely. There we go. The lighting in here is so cool. You can actually see the sugar kind of glitter in there a little bit. At least I think it's neat. Okay, so in there we've got our flour, our baking soda, our, there should be a little bit of salt, and our sugar. Now this next part is a little weird. Not scary weird, but just a smidge weird. We're going to 
make three, it says three wells in our dry ingredients. So you can see right here. So all you need to really do is just take your hands, make sure they're clean, and it really is just make three little, there goes my oven, make just three little holes in there. Yeah? That's my cat. There we go. Yeah, they don't need to be fancy. The reason you do this is to make sure that everything gets mixed in evenly. Um, if you've ever make, if you've ever made or if you ever make pasta, that's how you mix things together. A lot of pancake recipes say to do that too. They'll have you put all the wet ingredients in the middle um, and then sort of slowly mix it around. Okay. So we'll start with, first open everything here. Add the vanilla into one little well. Plus mixing with wells just looks cool. Get the oil ready here. Okay. And your oil is also gonna be really well wrapped. That's good, but it might just take a sec to get it all open. <laughs> That's my cat. Hi, buddy. Hi. Not sure if you can see him yet. There we go. Okay. Pour in the oil. All right. It might go a little bit over the well, and that is okay. There we go. Yeah, it went a little bit out, but that's fine. And then the vinegar in the last one. I can't believe I forgot to have my water ready. All right, once you got all those poured in there, you're going to take your cup of water. I've got a cup measure. You really can just take, if you've got a cup that it looks about eight ounces, that's how much a cup is. Fill that with water, bam. You're gonna take your water and pour that over everything. And Take either your tiny whisk or a fork and mix that all together. You can smell that vanilla, it smells really good. Okay. Now, in your kit, you will notice you've got a very smaller version of one of these rubber spatulas. Uh, mine is a special Antony one. I got it as a gift. Antony, obviously, from uh, the Fab Five. Kind of uh, an inspiration for me. And you're gonna take that spatula and you wanna scrape down the sides because you get a bunch of like extra batter, got dry ingredients, and you don't want those to go to waste. Or you don't want uh, little clumps of flour, just straight up flour, hanging out in your batter. That wouldn't be fun. I've had cakes come out where they've got like little flour bits. Not horrible, but not the best. Look at that. Okay, now it will still have some little lumps in there. That is okay. It's when you, if you're still, st if you're stirring and you still see like streaks of dry flour, that's when you want to keep mixing. Okay. There we go. Easy peasy. Now that we've got our batter off and look, can you believe that? I'm still amazed that it's done so fast. <laughs> As someone who does a lot of baking, I'm not used to batters just coming together like that. Especially not after we made um, bread last time. 
All right, now, again using your rubber spatula, pour it into your pan. There we go. Scrape all that good batter off the side so it gets into the pan. Well, I'm doing this. Fun fact, you might remember, uh, or maybe you haven't, I don't know, the uh, making those vinegar and baking soda volcanoes. And when you mix them all together, it gets all bu it bubbles up and explodes and all that. There it will be similar things happening with our cake in the oven. You'll notice, because we had that vinegar and that baking soda in here, that helps give it uh, some air. All right. Now I'm overkilling. You don't have to do this. Tamp it a few times. That kind of helps even things out. That's more for a more complicated batter than this, though. And now that we've got it, we can just move it right onto the oven. Okay, our uh, cake batter is all ready to go. Um, you might see that there's a little bit of batter like sticking really thinly to uh, the sides there. That's because the flaps fell onto the batter. Um, if that happens, if you give this a try, just take some cooking spray um, and sp uh, pull them back, spray into the sides there, uh, and that'll help them stick. You can also do that beforehand if you're not a goober like me. But the oven is ready, the batter is ready. Get it on in there. And we are going to bake for 25 minutes. We will see you back here in a bit. And welcome back. That means our cake should be done. Ooh, all right, I'm taking a peek at it. Top looks nice and poofy, but here's what you're gonna do if you're not sure if a cake is done yet. Peek it out just a little bit. And grab really anything. You can get a knife, you can get like a skewer. I've got a toothpick. Poke it into the middle. There we go. There's only, well, it won't focus, but there's only a little bit of crumb on there, which means cake is done. Turn off the oven, pop it on out. Now we're gonna let that sit in the pan for five, five, ten minutes. Uh, just before we get it out, we just kind of want it to I don't know what the scientific term would be, which we kind of want to let it chill out a little bit. Um, you can see also see these nice all those bubbles there uh, that comes from the vinegar and baking soda working together. That's pretty neat. All right, so we will be back in just a little bit uh, with this guy on a cooling rack, um, and then we'll talk about some potential frostings that you could do. This is the Maryland from the future. Um, cake is all finished. Um, and what you're seeing now is me working on making uh, a bonus topping for my cake. It's a uh, chocolate ganache. Uh, chocolate ganache is really easy to make. Um, you just want equal parts of chocolate and cream. Uh, so what I tried to do, because I did this on the fly, um, was get about four ounces total of chocolate. I had some leftover uh, mini milk chocolate chips and some white chocolate chips and then uh, four ounces of cream. Um, I think I actually added in too much cream uh, which you'll see later but uh, essentially what you do is you just take the cream you put it in a pan um, and you leave it to you don't really need to stir it too much just kind of keep an eye on it until it starts steaming up getting nice and warm. Uh, once it is nice and warm, you pour it into a bowl with the chocolate and then cover it with, uh, what I did was plastic wrap, uh, to just kind of keep that heat in. Uh, the goal is to have that cream, uh, soften up the chocolate and then you take a whisk and you stir it all together and ideally you get a nice thick sauce. 
um, you'll see that I used a little bit too much cream. Um, and so I just added in some chocolate to try and fix that. And it kind of did. Um, it still ended up a pretty uh, thin, but tasted really, really good, uh, considering it was just a two types of chocolate sauce. Um, so yeah, you could theoretically um, use that for just about anything. You could make chocolate milk with that if you wanted instead of like a Hershey sauce, um, but it still turned out pretty tasty. And don't toss it if it looks too thin. That's another thing um, is that you can probably try and fix it. It just takes a little bit of a little bit of thinking. Um, so if you've got any extra chocolate lying around um, after you've got enough for making a ganache, say, um, then you can just give that a try. So now we're going to take it, we're going to pour it on the cake and see how it turned out. And welcome back to our finished cake. Uh, you can see I put it on a cooling rack. You don't have to. This just makes it cool a little bit faster. Um, the uh, parchment paper came out A-OK. -okay. I've already got the pan and whatnot in the sink. Uh, so this is where your kit ends. Uh, you've made yourself a really good cake. Uh, that's fine just on its own. Um, you'll see in footage before this, I tried to make a chocolate ganache, uh, which is just... Uh, chocolate and cream and you mix that all together and it's supposed to become a very nice smooth sauce. Um, I tried to do this on the fly. Um, it didn't really work out. It's a little more just like hot chocolate. Um, <laughs> but the point of that is that you can really type it, top it with whatever you want if you want to top it with anything. Um, if you've got, just get some heavy whipping cream. Um, heavy cream, just mix it together. You can do it by hand. It would take a while, but you all you need is a whisk and some cream and the ability to just whisk for a long time. Um, and then you put it on there and it would just turn out pretty tasty. Or you can try to, uh, you could just melt some chocolate instead of trying to get all fancy, like making a chocolate ganache that I did. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see if this chocolate good ganache, it, it's a ganache. But I'm going to see if that won't like soak into our cake and make it nice and chocolatey and tasty real fast. Uh, so stay tuned. We'll see if whatever this chocolate ganache thing is works. All right, we're trying out the chocolate ganache. We're going to pour it on top. It's gonna get, this is going to get messy. I could put stuff down on the counter. I'm not going to because I'm a rebel. I might regret it later, but yeah. Let's pour this. Oh, yeah. There we go. This might actually behave a little bit better. Because ganache is weird. Ideally, look at that, there it goes. <laughs> Ideally, once you pour it on, it just takes a little while to cool and harden. Uh, so, yeah, look at that. <laughs> See, this is why it's uh, good that I'm baking at home, because this means I don't have to worry about it. It's just, it's all my mess. Here we go. All right. Hey, okay, that doesn't look too bad. A little weird, but not too bad. So we're going to let that cool and come back to it and see if we can get even just a semi-solid soft ganache. Stay tuned. Welcome back. We've got our cooled cake. I let the uh, slapdash ganache, I like that a lot, um, <laughs> cool a little bit to see if it hardened into something. So now we're going to do the fun part of any cake, which is cutting it. There we go. All right. Cake is nice and soft. The ganache is still like super thin like we saw, but it did give a nice little thin glaze. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, there we go. Whoop. And there we go, bam. We've made a nice little vanilla dairy-free sponge cake. Let's do the best part, obviously. Mm. I'll take it. That's pretty darn nice. Super mild flavor, super tasty, super easy. Um, and you don't even need to have a topping on it. It's pretty good just on its own. You could have it like put maybe put some ice cream on it. If you've got some chocolate sauce or whatever in the fridge, really anything. Mm. <laughs> Well, thank you for joining me for this second installment of the TCL Teen Bake Along. I hope you enjoyed your cake, and we will see you next time.